while you're close to the floor, feel free to have another sip of water. You can head to the third track now on the playlist. If you used a blanket for your knees, place it over to the side. We won't need it till the end of class. And then lift the knees so you're in a little crouch. We'll be heading towards a forward fold. So you can let the hips start to lift and come into a forward fold however is comfortable for you. I like to keep a deep bend in the knees so there's no pulling on the low back. And then just like we've been practicing, start to energetically drag the feet together and notice how there's this buoyancy in the spine. It's almost like um, you're like a suction cup and the spine starts to puff away from the earth and then release that. And try that a couple times, inhaling for the release and then exhaling as you drag the feet together, letting the back body puff up. The next time you puff up like a little jellyfish, push down into the feet, let the sits bones drop so the spine slowly rolls up and the hands can float. And then we'll add on the arms that we've been practicing. So bend the knees, drop the arms, inhale to gather energy, big sweeping motion, and then exhale, squeeze the feet together and let that roll up the spine as the hands come overhead. Take a few on your own as effortlessly as possible. And now um, try to feel how the impetus starts all the way at the soles of the feet, right? It's the squeezing of the feet and then the pushing down. Nice, Roseanne, that looks so fluid. Great, Takayo, I love that momentum all the way up. You're like a, a wave cresting. And the next time you're all the way up, pause in that straight line shape. Make sure the shoulders are soft. And just take a couple of breaths, nice and easy here. And something that's really important, you can release the arms down um, and turn to face me. Something that's really important as we work with the pelvic floor, and we're doing a lot of things that are, um, are strengthening, that's that lifting action. Um, we also need to be able to let it go and release. So in these moments when we hold, um, if you feel yourself gripping in any way, see if you can soften um, because it, it, both sides of the coin are really important. Um, if you haven't already turned to face me, please join me at the long edge of the mat for our standing sequence. Um, so we'll play with the curtsies that we do so often in class. Uh, but what's going to be really interesting in today's curtsies is feeling that interaction of the legs gently squeezing so that you feel a lot of support along the spine. Um, so let's start by bending the right knee, keeping that strength in the right leg as you glide the left foot behind you. Feel that little squeeze and use it to lengthen the spine. And then we'll inhale open to a big star and we'll exhale to go the other way. And you can move at your own pace nice and slow. Then just getting really interested in that sensation of the legs working together to better support the spine. So you feel really even and balanced and, and so light like the prima ballerina. Take one more to each side. And then we'll all meet on that first side with the right leg forward for our next movement. So um, take a couple of nice easy bounces. Make sure that you don't feel that in your knees, but it's just like a lightness through the spine. And then start to push into the front leg and see if you can use that inner thigh pulling together to hover the left foot. It is okay for the left foot to come to the leg, but you might not even need it because there's so much lightness in this area. And we'll take a few pulses like that. And the next movement I want to demo before you try it, from the curtsy, instead of going to tree, we're going to go through tree 
and let the foot step out into a short Virabhadrasana too. And it should feel really stable, right? It's that sensation of feeling connected and drawing up through the center. So when you feel ready for that, um, you can play with it a couple of times. I really like the moment of dragging the foot back into the curtsy to activate that center line and then keeping it strong as I step out. You can add a little wave. I notice that my body is craving that. And let's all meet in Virabhadrasana 2, starting to play with this waving action that is possible when the legs feel really strong and the spine feels really light. And the next uh, time you start to wave to the left, shift the weight into the left foot and now use that work we've been doing to float the back leg in a Ardha Chandrasana prep pose. And take a moment here, bounce the leg a couple of times and then step the right foot back turn to face me all ten toes face me and bend the right knee normally and don't do this yet normally we reach down towards the foot instead use the strength we've been cultivating to reach over to the right but feel how the strength of your legs allows you to really reach out and then reach down towards center into prasarta padottanasana Bend the knees really, really deeply. Hands can be on the legs if that's more comfortable. Make sure the toes are pointed forward. If it's more comfortable for you to have blocks, feel free to grab that. Sway hips from side to side. And then heel toe the feet in so they're parallel underneath the hips and we'll rise up by squeezing the feet together and letting the spine unfurl. Hands reach up and we'll prepare for the second side. Um, so step the feet wide, relax the arms down, start to bend into the left knee. Take a couple of bends here and try to feel the left heel anchoring so there's no pressure in the knee. And the next time you bend into the knee, shift the weight and glide the right foot behind you. Take a practice perch with the tree and then as you're ready, you can start to play with stepping out. Less is more at first because you don't want any jostling in the knee. You don't want it to feel like thunk, you know, and pressure in the knee, that's not good. And then if you want to glide the foot back for a little extra core strengthening, you can. And the next time you step out, pause there and start to sway the spine from side to side. Um, if you need to turn the back toes in slightly, feel free to do that. Um, I find it pretty magical looking out at you guys that the foot lands in a really safe place because you've been getting there with all those muscles on, right? So it's not going to end up in a weird place. The next time... <laughs> the right knee bends, start to shift the weight and use that dragging together action to lift the back leg. You can reach the arms out if you want to, even though that's kind of tricky. Try to stay light, bend the knee a couple of times and then set the left foot down, turn all 10 toes towards me, bend the left knee and then squeeze the inner thighs together as you reach all the way up and over to the left and then down towards the left thigh or knee or foot and towards center. Hands can come to the thighs or shins or floor or blocks. Feel free to pause in your forward fold or sway from side to side. And then heel toe the feet together. Squeeze them towards one another so that you can effortlessly rise all the way up just like we've been practicing. Pause at the top, float the arms down, and bring hands to heart center. Close the eyes if that feels comfortable, and just take a couple of breaths here. Notice any sense of awareness that you've built up from the feet to the pelvic floor, and then any lightness through the spine. Mm, we'll close our standing sequence with a little bit of goddess pose, which is sort of like the ultimate um, 
a way to incorporate our pelvic floor. So slide the feet wide and then turn the toes out um, and start to bend the knees and make sure that the angle of the thighs is the same as the angle of the feet. So if the, the knees are pointing in, then the feet are gonna come in a little bit more. So you can play with that a couple times. And then start to drag the feet towards one another. And notice how all of a sudden it's just like do 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 do. Like you lift right out of it effortlessly. And what I love so much about this pose, and it's taken me years to, to discover in myself, is when I do this, I feel um, a lot more in the back of my pelvic floor all the way up my spine. So as you play with that, maybe you can feel how this activates the base of your core and gives you more awareness, um, not just of the abdomen, but of the back body. Take Add in the arms here, float the hands, and as you exhale, push the hands down as you hover. And take a few of these bird swoops as you get really light through the pelvis and spine. And the next time you're down, start to shift the weight over to the right foot and use the bird swoop to play with hovering the back leg. If it's comfortable, you can reach the left hand back and the right arm forward. Take a breath. And then set the back foot down. Come back into goddess. Take one bird swoop at center. And then come into the squat. Shift the weight the other way and take that bird swoop to <laughs> launch over the other leg. You can stay here as long as you want. I love reaching out with my left hand. There's this nice cross lateral action that lets my right leg reach more. And then set it down. And now on your own, you can take a couple of these pulses through center and then asymmetrically to the other side. We've been working through the whole class integrating our legs up through the core. So as you take flight, try to feel that sense of the inner thighs weaving into the core and supporting you. Even though one leg is floating, it can still be really supportive. Feel free to pause anywhere that's interesting to you. Add anything on. And we'll just take about 30 more seconds. And when you've balanced out sides, we can meet at center, turn all 10 toes forward. And actually let's slowly, kind of dramatically, heel toe and the feet in. So you get that internal and external rotation of the femurs. And then we'll meet with the feet underneath the hips. And feel that ever so gentle squeeze of the feet coming together that allows the spine to lengthen and then try to dial it back. Like, let's say you naturally did 50% of your effort. See if you can release and release and release until it's just like the most minimal energetic effort of the feet squeezing and the spine lengthening. And bring hands to heart center. We'll be heading down into Mm, I changed my mind um, <laughs> into a forward fold. So you can do this however is comfortable for you or stay along for the ride with me. Um, let's send the hips back and lengthen the spine forward. Keep that little squeeze with the legs and start to drape the spine over the thighs. Bend the knees as deeply as possible. Bring the hands down and lower one knee at a time. Take a moment in tabletop and then squeeze the legs together and start to circle the hips. And the squeezing of the legs will probably limit how much you can circle the hips. Try to keep both knees anchored. And then circle the other way. Bring the hips to the heels. Bring the hands to the thighs and ever so gently drag the hands forward over the quadriceps a few times, just massaging the thighs. 
And then start to bring the spine in. So as the hands drag forward, the spine gently rounds. You can push the shins down into the floor and gently rock from side to side. Just make sure you're loose with it so you're not building any tension in the muscles of the back. And then sit the hips over to the left and use that gentle squeezing action to elongate the spine from the bottom up. Take a nice easy twist to the left. If your phone is accessible, you can go to the next track to start um, chilling out musically. And just take a couple of breaths here and try to feel that activity the inhale again pushing down of diaphragm pelvic diaphragm and the exhale as the breath leaves the body it creates a vacuum the diaphragm lifts and that pulls on the pelvic floor so you don't have to do it it naturally happens with the breath and maybe now you can feel it maybe you can even feel how that exhale naturally draws the legs together without you doing it and it's that really subtle, you know, 1% kind of experience um, that takes a lot of awareness to feel. Mm. Take the right foot and step it um, forward. Um, if you want to, you can cross it over. I actually prefer it outside of my knee. And then start to twist nice and easy to the left and and explore the same thing now. It's a little bit harder, it's less obvious when the legs aren't stacked, but maybe you can feel kind of like in goddess pose, how there's that activity on the back of the pelvic floor that um, gently drags the sits bones together and lets you feel really supported through pelvis and spine. And then um, twist to the left again so the legs can stack and then shift the hips all the way over to the other side so we can do the same sequence and still see each other. So nice easy twist now to the right should be the second side and just breathe with it. We've done a lot of movement so you don't really have to activate a lot here. We really just want to tie everything back together and hopefully it already feels like everything is so integrated from focusing on that pulling towards the midline instead of stretching in poses like tree and goddess and Virabhadrasana too. If you want to bring the gaze into it, see if the strength can travel all the way up to the crown of the head and then ever so effortlessly let that spiral the whole spine a little bit more to the right. And then gently come out of the twist, lift the left knee, place the sole of the left foot to the earth. Option to cross it over or try it open if you've never done that. It's, I find it just so lovely. And then start to twist the other way. And again, see if you can explore um, that really subtle integration that's possible. I love, um, for me, focusing on bringing the sits bones slightly together helps me use my pelvic floor to stabilize here and remember the breath helps us contract and release so we never want to hold we never want to grip 